Hey guys, how's it going? So in anticipation of Leagues 5, I went ahead and I decided to make a little tier list of which regions or uh, what focus a specific region is compared to where in the game you are, as I think a lot of people immediately gravitate towards the late game as opposed to the early and mid game, which are rather important in terms of building up your account, as ultimately if you have really good end game content, but don't really have a good structure to get there outside of just constantly throwing yourself at a uh, boss that you're not quite prepared for yet, uh, that might not necessarily be the best strategy for success. So it can be worth considering, do you actually have a good mix of early game, late game, game and mid-game regions. Um, I wasn't able to find a good render of the Volumor icon that I've been seeing around. I think it's community made, so I just went ahead and used this sucker instead. Uh, but I'll go ahead and start and sort of go through my justification. Obvious disclaimers are obvious. This is my opinion. You might disagree, you might agree, completely up to you whether or not you think uh, that's right. And if you think that I might have misranked something, I've actually included a link to the uh, tier list down in the description. So you'll be able to go ahead and create your own version of it and share it. All of that said and done, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with Esgarnia. So Esgarnia is interesting as what immediately comes to mind in terms of endgame content is Nex. As Nex can be a little rough in terms of taking her out. That said, if you're looking at most of the other content in that region, it's actually really not that uh, focused on one area of the game. Uh, sure, God of Wars I might put as sort of mid-late game in terms of getting uh, the gear upgrades there. Once you do have your combat relic, that generally was sort of the Thing, the main thing that would give you access to do God Wars Dungeon rather efficiently, as well as having steady access to Last Recall, which I'm sure that's going to be coming back. That said, there's a legitimate question on whether or not Combat Masteries will be something... We're still not entirely sure how that's going to affect uh, combat in this game. So, now that said, there's also some very solid just general scaling content, just uh, in terms of the patches it gives you access to, um, you know, gives you access to the giant mole, which can be really great for getting birds' nests as well as seeds. Um, so honestly, I, I feel like it covers the very late game, the late game and the mid game fairly well, actually. So while the very late game, you're pretty much limited next, and the mid game is not quite too much of, I'd say God Wars Dungeon really shines and puts it pretty solidly as something you're going to want in the late game. Desert. Now, Desert was an absurdly powerful region um, last league, and it's understandable why. If you're going Desert, you obviously, sorry, if you're going Mage, you obviously wanted it for the Shadow. That's changed up a little bit here, as you can get any of the three Mega Rears from any of the raids. But by the same token, uh, you might think that, oh, well, that makes a dungeon, that makes a Desert not a necessary pick. At the same time, it also mean, makes Mauritania, as well as Zaya, a less necessary pick as well, as you can get the other Mega Rares there as well. Now, they haven't really gone into too much detail about what other drops you might expect. I obviously assume you'll be able to get Vials of Blood from uh, non-theater blood raids for the simple reason of you needed to charge the, uh, sang not the Sanguine SD staff, the uh, Scythe of Fitter. Though honestly, I would like it if they gave an alternate method so it can be charged with just blood wounds. So that way, if you do opt to go Mauritania, the vials of blood, you can just go ahead and use them straight for potions, and you don't feel the need to uh, just sort of split between that. And also, you know, if adding vials of blood as a drop table of the other raids would be, but you know, this is hearsay, and I'm focusing on the desert now. Who knows what they're exactly going to implement? That said, one thing I would like to note. The desert has actually been confirmed. We're fighting the Caliphate Queen. It's going to have some new mechanics, and, which is good, because right now its mechanic is hit you, hit you, hit you, and then just make you hate your life. And they've confirmed that you're going to get a really powerful range item from that. It's also just got really solid scaling methods. You have Temporos, you have the Sorcerer's Garden, you have Blackjacking. What else do you have? Oh, you just have so much. And ultimately, while Trickster might 
devalue the value of some of those. Oh, it's also got the agility PRM, and it's got pyramid plunder. It's just got so many different mini games. It's phenomenal. So honestly, I'm going to go ahead and put it here, and I'm putting the ones I value a little more uh, to the left. So I value Desert a little more than Asgarnia for a general purpose. Fremnic Legion. This is an, an interesting one. Fremnic on its own was never really super fantastic. It was just kind of, you know, good in combination with other things. Um, most notably the Desert, as then you could actually go ahead and get the Desert Treasure 2 wings. That said, if you pick Desert and Fremnic, that only actually gave you access to the Venerator ring, as well as the Magus ring. Which, they're not bad, but they're also not sort of things that you might want to go out of your way to get. So, if you were to go from Nick, that would... Oh, and actually, that's something I can consider if you do pick Desert. Assuming that, uh... Oh, actually, yeah. And yeah, no, I, I think I'm going to have to put Desert into Very Laking for that reason. As Desert Treasure 2 bosses, um, especially if they get some sort of Echo variant, those are going to be super powerful in terms of getting the, uh... Desert Treasure 2 pieces, and you automatically have access to the Leviathan with Mistolin. You just need the Desert to unlock uh, Desert Treasure 2, so yeah, I'm going to move that over there. But back onto Fremnik, um, it, it just sort of seems like a situation where it's a Jack of All Fates and Master of None. I'm hoping that they do an Echo variant of the Phantom Muspa, um, but on the topic of which, the Phantom Muspa, well, you know, a little bit of a more chill boss, probably uh, a little harder than Forkath, a little easier than Zora in my opinion. Solid boss, but it gives such phenomenal seeds, and honestly, I think that's a really underrated use for it, especially if you're going Farmer's Fortune and you can just sort of grow them automatically, that's going to be really powerful. Um, now that said, in terms of super late game, Duke is the easier of the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. You get access to the uh, Lunar Isles for the Lunar Spellbook, which just has a lot of general purpose to it. Um, you also get access to the Fires that will perm remove like permanent effects. So honestly, I'm probably going to have Fremnik sort of mid-game, as, you know, Dagonoth Kings, the... Uh, Phantom Muspa, it's just, you know, stuff that's a little, it can be a little tricky to newer players, but it's not anything where it's like, oh yeah, you're gonna want to be a little careful there. I I, I really think that uh, what you're fighting there is probably easier than the uh, most of the Godward's dungeon bosses. Moving on to Cantrin, I know I'm gonna actually put it here. Cantrin is fantastic early game. The number of quests that you get access to is insane. I mean, just Fight Arena alone, I think, sells it. Uh, I think you also are able to do Waterfall Quest. Um, Tyronwin does autocomplete a lot of that, so do keep that in mind if you're going for some sort of out there. Um, in terms of being able to pickpocket Arty Knights, which is going to be a lot pretty laid back, it's just a really good early game pick. Uh, once you do get into the later game, all you really have is Demonic Gorillas. Um, and, you know, the, I guess, Smoke Devils are also, but the, those aren't really, they're not really late game in the sense that they're hard to fight. Um, they're late game in that they have a hard Slayer requirement in order to beat it. That said, I think it's pretty likely that the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil does get some sort of uh, uh, variant. And if I were a guessing man, I think they would go ahead and give it some sort of strong melee weapon as Kandran as a region. Actually, no, I, I think it's probably more likely that they give it a ranged weapon now that I think about it. As Kandran as a region, you still have access to torture. Um, you know, and assuming it works the same way it does last league, you get access to piety. Um, so it, it's not really a bad call to go Kandran with melee. That said, the past two Trailblazer Leagues, the Monkey Lapse tasks has been an enormous part of it. So, if you are picking that, keep in mind, Monkey Lapse might be something that you have to deal with. Probably a waste if you went the Trickster Relic, as ultimately you're already getting loads of agility experience anyways, but, you know, it's something to keep in mind. Cantrin just has a lot of things in the early game that are really going to be useful to just blast your account over to uh, where you need to go. And so I'm really going to put in a solid early game there. Then 
for the non-applicable tabs, I'm just going to go ahead and put Karamja and Mistle in. At the end of the tier list, I'll come back to them and sort of say what I think their content is geared towards. Um, but I'm just putting non-applicable for obvious reasons, as you get them for free, so there's not really a choice there. Mauritania. This... I know I'm going to put it in very late game. I'm, I'm still debating whether or not I would put it more so than the desert. For the simple reason that the desert treasure 2 bosses, they're kind of tough. At the same time, hard mode top, Fasani's Nightmare, especially given last year those leagues did have the harder variants. Uh, and while you can argue that TOA does have the harder variants, you can also pick and choose which invocations you want, and it's kind of a customizable lead. And if you just want to run a bunch more standard raids, you get the same loot as if you're running the elite ones, I mean, minus some of the uh, ornament kits. Um, so it's still in the very late game. Honestly, I'd probably put Desert a little closer, just because it has more options, and simply in combination with Mistelin, you automatically get access to the Leviathan, and I despise the Leviathan. I was so happy to go ahead and get it on my, or get the, uh, tablet on my first post-quest KC. Oh my god, I despise that thing. Now the only tablet I'm missing is a Whisperer one, and, you know, I do Whisperer when I get some Slayer tasks. I don't do a bunch, but I need to grind there. Anyways, back on topic of Mauritania. I made the mistake of picking Mauritania first. I thought I was being big brain, you know, I do a bunch of temple trekking, uh, get a bunch of points there, and then do entry mode top to get uh, combat experience, and then do the Barrows uh, mini quest before unlocking the desert, so that way I can uh, get the EXP. That did not work out that way at all. One, there weren't nearly as many tasks for those things that I mentioned. As a matter of fact, entry mode top had no tasks, it just had combat achievements, which you know, was nice for that, I guess, but I don't know, it wasn't great. Um, but the in terms of what you can actually do in the mid and early game, there was just not a lot. I mean, t again, Temple Trekking is not bad, but you're really picking Mauritania for all of the PVM content. You have the Grotesque Guardians, you have the Uraxor that was just released. Um, if you do want that necklace, you will have to go Kandrin. So honestly, if you're going melee, you probably want to stick with the Blood Fury anyways, as it's only a 4 strength bonus that you're missing, and you're... Well, yes, you are missing some offensive stats. With the relics, your accuracy should be so unbelievably high. Frankly, it really shouldn't matter. You shouldn't be missing too much, so... A little extra attack bonus is going to have a neg negligible impact on your DPS. Whereas, being able to constantly heal... I think that just makes the game a lot more relaxed, so I wouldn't really focus too much on pairing Kandrin and Mortania. It's not a bad pick if you did, just because Kandrin is a really game focus, Mortania is late game focus. It's just I, I don't think that you should feel obligated to pick it for that reason. Lutus Guardians, Araxor, and while those are probably more late game slash mid game bosses, when you're early in the late game, Hard Mode Top, Fasani's Nightmare, like I mentioned, both of those uh, did have harder variants last league. So uh, there are some nice unlocks here, but you definitely don't want this as your first pick. Um, where the Desert, while it is more heavy late game focused, there's still a lot of mid game content. As a matter of fact, I don't want to put that here, just because it, it, it's just such a balanced region. You get so much for it, mid, early, and late game. I know I need an ad blocker. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a tough call. I, the, the only reason I'm putting this here is not because it has less very late game content than Mauritania. It's just because it's more well-rounded. Like, this is not a uh, best to worst. This is just sort of where the general region's focus is and what sort of order you're probably going to want to select it in. Chiron one. This is going to be an interesting region, as Chiron one has this issue, where it is a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. So when you think to what you have access to Priftiness, which is most of what you're going to be doing here outside of Zora, you're pretty, you have access to the Gauntlet and the Corrupted Gauntlet, though honestly, Corrupted Gauntlet really isn't that rough with uh, the combat relics that you have access to. I mean, sure, it requires two styles, but you know you can just sort of pick a weapon, poke at it, and then ram through it with your on style. Even if it doesn't 
work quite that way. You also have access to the, you do have access to the easier gauntlet if you did want to go for a little bit more relaxed approach. I would really recommend doing the corrupted gauntlet just because of the unbelievably great EXP rates. Um, but even that, that gets you the Bofa as well as the Blade of Saldor, which sound like great weapons on paper until you consider the fact that they are two tick weapons. So they're not really getting the full benefit if they are rounded down again, which we're not completely sure on. But it also grants great alcaballs, you know, with the crystal shards from doing various activities throughout the city, it, being able to pickpocket elves, um, Zolra, and the drops there. It, it just sort of has a lot of really nice things to have but it doesn't really give you one thing that's really good. And honestly, that's probably why it makes for a good mid-game pick, as then you, once you pick it, you can just sort of go into the city, do whatever, and you know, you're generally good to go. Varlamor. This is an interesting one, and this is probably the one I'm least confident on, for one simple reason. It's not done yet. We're still getting phase two. And once phase two comes out, It'll be really interesting to see how the Herblore minigame pairs with a lot of the relics, as if you get Farmer's Fortune, generally speaking, Herblore is not a big issue, because you can just grow all of your herbs instantly, and then make the potions with them, and it's just a matter of getting the secondaries. The idea be behind the Herblore minigame, based off what I've read so far, and feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, the benefit to that is that you have access to the uh, you have access to more XP per herb, even if it is at a slower EXP rate, which is enormous for Iron Man. Not, might not necessarily be something you want to go for as a main account, but it's kind of like the mahogany homes of uh, potions. That said, it comes with a quality of life auto potioning mach machine mabobber, so you can pre-pot really easy. That's going to be super nice. Um, you've got the AFK thieving which is really chill and relaxed. You have the Moons of Peril, which they... A lot of people say that it's solid gear all around, but if you actually look at it, I don't think that the... The, the magic gear isn't bad, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking at that and thinking, this is going to be my main magic gear, I don't know, I feel like I might actually just prefer to have arms or something like that for the defensive bonuses. Um, though that said, it can make switching a little easier if you're like a magic main but might have to switch to melee for something. So it's not bad for that, it's just, I, I don't know, I think people might be overhyping it a little bit. I think it's mostly just good melee here. Like the Eclipse out of Lattle, when it uses a melee strength bonus with a full set, like that's not going to be the best in combination if just trying to use it as great range gear. Um, you know, as a ranged set, it's solid, don't get me wrong, but as straight ranged gear, I still think you might be better with the Blessed Dragonhide. Speaking of which, the new boss that they're releasing actually does have a stronger version of Blessed Dragonhide, which is fairly nice, as if you are going ranged, you're probably going to be looking at getting the Desert or the Missouri, and then as Garnia to be able to buff that, as well as have access to Zera Van Braces. Maybe not, um, as you're still obviously... Oh, actually, no, that might not be a bad call, as that also gives you access to the desert, and you can get Twisted Bow there. Okay, yeah, that's, that's actually a strong synergy I didn't consider. So honestly, I'm going to put Volumor before Heronwyn and Frevnik, uh, as there's just sort of a lot of content there. Also, you get to do the Frog Quest, and the dialogue on that is freaking hysterical. It is probably one of my favorite quests in the game. It's so good. <laughs> uh, Peril, you, oh, the Hunting Guild. Yeah, the Hunting Guild is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, definitely a lot of good sort of mid-game skilling content. Um, and if you want to sort of go for Valormor, I, I'd probably say Valormor is one of the most solid first picks as it just gives you access to so much content, and it doesn't it doesn't completely fizzle out in the late game. Uh, you still have access to the Dragon Pass, which is going to give access to the Dragon Bane Wand, unless they redesigned it. I think they did a poll about it, about what they wanted it to be. I think it's still Dragon Bane focused. But yeah, in any case, well, more really solid pick, and I think it's going to be good for mid-game. Wilderness early game. Honestly, I'm going to put it right here as, as an early game pick. That's pretty much what the Wilderness is ironically kind of designed for, as the bosses aren't mechanically hard. Uh, 
Uh, once you get your combat relic, you can start doing maybe not the most efficient kills of them, uh, but you know you can still do reasonably efficient kills. All deaths are going to be treated as PVM deaths. Uh, that said, if someone wants to crash your spot, they can kill you, so do keep that in mind. In terms of the sheer amount of things that you get access to, it really just pretty much amounts to money supplies, which is generally the two things that you're short on in early games. Zombie Pirates, for example, um, while you will need the Medium Wilderness Diary, uh, unless they make some sort of league-specific change. Um, so those will give you a lot of money, a lot of supplies, a lot of good gear early on. But in terms of late game items, there's just not a lot there. And that's okay, you know. Now that said, if you are picking the wilderness, expect to get PK'd, that comes with the territory. I'm sorry, it just does. The wilderness is inherently PvP content. If you step into the wilderness, you are, you know, it's they give you that big warning, you're stepping into the wilderness, someone can kill you. Even though you won't lose your stuff in this league, someone can still irritatingly set you back. But maybe you like that, and if you want to go for that and just sort of troll people, it's part of the game, get over it. <laughs> now, Corrond. I'm going to go ahead and actually put this in the mid-game tier. While Chambers of Zarek, yeah, that's late game. Winter Todd, phenomenal. You get so many supplies, so much XP. It'll be a really nice way to go ahead and get started. You have access to the Woodcutting Guild, you have access to Konar. Um, I don't quite remember how Brimstone Keys worked last week. They were enabled. But it's worth noting there. Farming Guild, that's always great. There's... It's just a much larger region, and now that it's been sort of restructured and more completed, Oh, and you also get access to the Archaea Spellbook for Thralls, as well as the Utility Spells there. It's, it's just a good spellbook, honestly. You just have such varied access to everything. I don't know, I, I feel like Valormor, while people might be focused on the raids, you just have access to so much more. You have access to the uh, various guilds there, you have access to... Uh, the various skilling methods. It's a larger content, so if you're worried about having to compete for resources in the early game, I think it's probably a safer pick, as I don't think a lot of people will be picking that one too early. And even if they do, like I mentioned, it's just such a big region. You have sand crabs to AFK uh, for the people working from home, like myself. There's just a lot of good options here. So yeah. Oh, and yeah, Arceus books. All right. Now I'll sort of go into the final two over here. I'm just going to go ahead and shove Karamja into late game for one simple reason, the Inferno. As, you know, it's not that you don't have stuff you can do on Karamja, that's useful. Uh, you have the nature altar, you know, that's solid if you need some nature rooms to make some money uh, for Alps, but it, it's just kind of there. And then Mistelin, I don't know, I feel like it's a mid-game focus, um, just for the simple reason that no, I'll actually probably say it's early game with some mid-game content, as zombie, not zombie pirates, armored zombies, that zombie axe is actually pretty solid, and uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if they gave it a very mild nerf in the next couple of weeks, just a tiny bit of accuracy, as well it's meant to make it a little bit of a less linear decision as it's not it's not best in slot anywhere but it's a really solid option and probably better than dragon scimitar in a lot of places so honestly i'd say that solid early game and i think he'll be coming back here a little more often than you expect to um especially with the tormented demons but you know ultimately overall i'd say that this is uh where i would put that tier list let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the description, what things I might have overlooked, what echo variants that might change things, and uh, you know why I'm stupid and wrong and terrible. Uh, just make sure to leave, make your comments as disrespectful as possible, so that way uh, I know that you're my kind of scum. Peace.